So, my mama died on Monday. I wasn't home when she passed. I mean, I had been home ever since they moved mama out of the hospital so she could be with us. My school made special arrangements so I could make up the work. I knew full well that the Lord's angels could swoop down any day and bring mama up to paradise without a single word of warning. I sure would have appreciated a word or sign or something. Because we were short one bag of feed that morning. I said I'd go fetch one down at the grocer's, but I don't think anyone fully understands just how hard it is to carry a 50 pound bag of feed on the back of a huffy roadster with loose fenders. Even old Miss Ripley, the librarian, came out of her warehouse of books, squinting her eyes, saying, That you, Juniper Gill! <laughs> yes, ma'am, I says. Heavens, child, why are you making all that noise? Sorry, ma'am, I says. Huffy Fenders ain't meant to pull no 50 pound bag of feed. No, she says. I suppose they're not neither. Sorry. Sometimes I get carried away, I says. Anyway, so I made it about a mile past. Before I felt it, it was feeling so hard I had to stop my bike. It was then that I knew Mama was gone. Anyway, so, yeah, that was Monday. Today's Saturday. Daddy's sad, I know he is, but I haven't seen him cry yet. Everyone's wondering why I haven't cried yet. And to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm not sure I know. Uh, I was uh, just remembering my manners. Well, I, I'd offer you a stick, but well, they got regulations in this here building. And they might string me up. You understand? Maybe next time. My name is Tommy Anderson. Uh, my friends call me Dewdrop. I got that name from a, a basketball shot I developed, whereby the shooter throws up a high out and hook shot over the defender. It is an almost unstoppable, unblockable shot that I made famous around these here parts. They say that uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had already developed such a shot. The sky hook, you may have heard of it. But I'm still not convinced that he had it first. I believe that honor goes to yours truly. <laughs> but anyways, I I've known the Gill family since way back. I live just down the road from the Guild Place. You know, I own the local bed, breakfast, and eatery around these here parts for people passing through our picturesque little town. Well, I bet you guess the name of it. Well, that's right, the Dew Drop Inn. <laughs> you know, it's been a few days, but I'm getting more and more concerned about my boy and that sweet little girl of his. It's obvious from our recent conversations that lack thereof. The passing of Veronica Gill has been very hard on both of them. Everything just went south so just dang fast. It wasn't always like that. No sorry, the Gill place was the place to be. It was a place of fun. It was a house of prayer. A house of love. Uh, I got it. Well, just about six months ago, it was uh, Junie and Veronica's birthday. Well, well, that's right, they shared a birthday. I always thought that it brought them closer together than a mother and daughter should, could be, if, if that's possible. Well, Jordy asked me to go over and hang up some fixings with Angelica for the party. Well, they needed someone who could reach up high. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't have missed it for nothing.
seen you wear it a couple of times too, Judy, when you got it out of your mother's dressing drawer. Oh. <laughs> you were so mad. I thought you'd tan me for sure. I about did. It's an important heirloom. And I wanted to, I've always meant to give it to you, but I wanted to wait till you were ready for the responsibility of it. Oh, she's super responsible, Miss B. She does everything Miss Barrett tells her to do at school, and she's been the class monitor like all year. And that's wonderful, but that only reaches the surface. Jenny, you show me that you have a good heart, a heart that's going to keep Jesus and its good graces in for your entire life. And I hope that one day, if you have a daughter, you'll give this life to her when you feel she's ready for it. Okay, put it on. Well, it's perfect. My name is Angelica Simmons. My first husband, Jordy's daddy. Passed away back in 95. Natural causes, he was much older than I, you see. My son Jordy took that one pretty hard too. So sensitive, even as a boy. I'm a retired teacher, middle school English, 38 years. Jordy thought I should have stayed in long enough to have my granddaughter Juniper in class, but I thought that to be a bit inappropriate. Call me old fashioned, but only because I am. I wouldn't have Jordy in my class either for the same reason. Now, do drop, I had. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a, a bit problematic. <laughs> These days after Veronica's passion have been tough, I won't lie. But as trying as they are, I'm going to put my troubles on God's shoulders. It's just that in all my years, I don't recall the good Lord being quite so tall. But we'll get through it. The gills are as tough as nails. Now, if you excuse me, I've got dinner about ready. Judy, take those things out of your ears, turn around, face your family, show a little respect before you start your dinner. Like you? I'm sorry, did you say something? Going back your head. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless us to service and just bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies as we as we keep ever mindful of the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Have y'all ever heard the one about the priest, the pastor, and the rabbi? <laughs> you know, this attitude of yours better change and change pretty quick. I have no idea about your schoolwork. And you know, what's the deal with ditching all your chores? I'll get to them, Dad. Just have it then. Gosh, don't have to get all weird. All, all weird. I, I don't have to get all weird. <clears throat> I'm not understanding this whole personality change. I mean, maybe we could help you if you said anything. The problem is you don't say anything. <clears throat> and ever since you got, you know, I don't even know what the word is, you constantly have those earplugs in your ears, you're, you got your nose in that stupid book. Meantime, your room's all in shambles. You ignore everybody around you. It's like we don't even know you anymore. Oh, yeah, you should talk. You know, half the time you don't even come to dinner. You're too busy seeding rows and packing up green. You spend more time with old Blossy than you do anyone else. You uh, don't even go to church anymore. Uh, I've got a farm to run. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, we're in a little bit of trouble right now. The trouble is here in that house, Dad. Look around you. You say you don't know me? I don't know you. In church? Why should I go to church? So that I can pray to God? So, so that he can get us out of a tight situation so he can send his blessings down on I our us? You listen to me right now. You are going to start to do whatever I tell you to around here. You understand? No more of your disrespectful sass. No more of you shirking your chores. No more of you. You still don't want to stay, right? That is enough. What's that? What's so priceless? Major Sergeant still wants his lifetime of free veggies. Oh, Scott? Yeah, he's got them. Hope you like broccoli red. Yeah. Well, how are my ladies? 
Well, hey, you look pretty good to me. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm just a little bit tired, but okay. All right, well, how about you, Jim and Ruth? How's it look to you? It looks awesome. Oh, awesome. That's a good word right there. Hey, can I introduce the any of you ladies and some fresh vegetables? You know, Doc says we gotta eat healthy. Healthy is good for the heart. Oh, that reminds me. Sorry, Miss Walker. Don't mind me. I'm just standing here. Looking pretty. I try. This is beautiful. Look how it shines. Do you want to try it on, Becky? Uh, Junior, go put it on. No, no, I, I couldn't. I know how much it means to both of you, and I know how much you mean to both of us. So here. Oh my. Oh, come oh, look. Wow. Becky, tell me you're not crying. Well, like, like a princess, both of you. All you need now is a, a prince. Or uh, maybe a boy prince. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now do you have boyfriends? Mr. Dew, I'm only 12. I don't have a boyfriend. Boyfriend? You had to say the people. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I don't. Mr. Dew is just speaking that term. Oh. <laughs> That's good because there are no more friends. Uh, if there were more friends, there would be shotguns. <laughs> yeah. uh, a shotgun who could put a hole in more friends' body about this big. <laughs> Not a pretty sight. And then you'll be so embarrassed because you'll be the only one at school who has a boyfriend with a hole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a big old hole. Hey, you can nickname him Donut Boy. Donut Boy. <laughs> well then, Donut Boy will be sending you love letters. Oh yes. Oh, Donut Boy, you complete me. You make me whole. <laughs> Yes, okay. <clears throat> Five, six, seven, eight. I, I think, think I'll go. 